moving load analysis and live load analysis. Then we'll check some results for the bridge. We'll, we'll do some load combinations as per ASTO code and then we'll do a design of the composite bridge using ASTO code and probably we'll have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. So to begin with, um, the bridge information. So currently we are having a three-span um, bridge. It is similar to what you have seen in FHWA design uh, uh, guide. Um, uh, there is an example of a steel curved bridge in FHWA. So I've tried to simulate that thing uh, properly, but still it, uh, some things are needed in it uh, to get the exact results. So I will do it probably in the tutorial and I will send you um, uh, guys that tutorial. So uh, how to start with such a thing? So I will just show you in a few minutes. So we have three spans uh, of 160 feet and 200 feet of mid span and the third span is 160 feet again. And uh, the radius of curvature is just single radius that is uh, of 700 feet uh, for, the, uh, for the curved bridge. For the material properties, we are having a structural steel property of ASPMA 709 grade 50W. Uh, it will be around 70 uh, MPa. That's the uh, sorry. And uh, for concrete, we are having a compressive strength of 4 ksi. Then for slab reinforcing uh, reinforcing steel, we are having 60 ksi uh, uh, steel section uh, 60 ksi steel material properties. Uh, for the loadings on the bridge, we are having the self weight of the bridge, the live load. Uh, so for live load, we, are, we will consider around three 12 foot traffic lanes of HL93. See, all the things are similar to what FHWA example presents. So um, the units, the weights and everything. The weighing surface uh, is around 25 PSF that we have done. And then um, parapets and barriers is about 495 pounds per feet. So these are the section properties that, that we'll be considering um, uh, in our model. Okay. So usually, uh, as you are, as you guys are already aware of, that if you are going to do a steel top bridge, usually you will consider this I section separately, this I section separately, and all these things you have to consider separately. And uh, I mean, it leads to some design issues uh, if you model in such a way and because it doesn't take the uh, same when on torsion properly. So if there is a torsion force usually, so if there is a torsion force usually, like, sorry, if there is a torsion force, then there is an equivalent uh, shear force that is uh, generated inside the webs to resist that torsion. And due to these air force, the webs might go local buckling, and so you have to consider those forces that are there. So all these things is very difficult to do it using uh, all these design considerations. It's very difficult to do if you are doing it by separate I sections, right? So what in Midas we will do is that we'll just create a tub sections uh, and within with a slab, and we'll use the wizard uh, to go about the modeling. Okay, and these are like the two sections. So for span one and three, we are having this kind of a section. For uh, uh, span two, uh, I'm having the second type of section that you're seeing here. This is the construction staging information that is the there. So you have like negative zones. These are the negative moment zones, and we have positive moment zones. So the positive moment zones will be first constructed uh, in the first phase. Then the negative moment zones will be done in the second stage. So these are like the construction staging information that we'll be using in our model. So we start uh, by giving material and section properties. So we, uh, we have our Midas civil. So I hope that you have already uh, attended our previous webinars and you are already aware of uh, different uh, menus and different options that are there. So I'm not, I will not be um, so detailed about the options that I'm using. So I hope that you have that previous knowledge of uh, all these things. 
So to um, provide to provide a material information, I can go to properties, I can go to material properties, or I can right click properties and go to material. So these are like the two basic methods. So I can go to material properties. Okay. And then I can click on add. So once you click on add, you have the material section property. So I can add a section of A70950W. Before that, yeah, uh, the units are a problem, right? So if we want it in kips and inch, so what we can do is that we can go to kips from here and inch from here. Okay, so we can change the unit anytime that I wish for. So I can go to HTM9S, then provide A709TW. I'll click on apply uh, because I need to add more section properties. So I'll click on apply. Similarly, I will add for concrete. So that will be like C4000. Um, so HTMRC. And I can just type in here for KSI. If you wish to give your modulus elasticity, your own modulus elasticity, so what I can do is that I can just go to none again. So I can edit this menu and I can give uh, my own value here. Okay. And then I can click OK. So th these are the only two material properties that I'm using. So after that section property, if you have attended the previous webinar, uh, likewise what I will do is that I will just switch from material to section. Okay, so, so I will go to section and click on add. So once you go to section properties, uh, then uh, there are different tabs that we will be using. Uh, currently we will directly go to the composite tab. So you can add a steel box section, you can add a steel IE section, or you can add a steel tub section. So if you are having a symmetrical steel tub section, you are basically going to do using steel tub type 1. If you have like an unsymmetrical thing, then you can go for steel tub type 2. Okay, so you can have like from a reference, you can just give the positions and all the things. So I'm using steel tub type 1. So just name it as, if you remember, I gave two sections. One is section one and one is section two. So I will name it as section one. So the slab information. So if you remember from the PPT, so we have an effective width of 243 uh, inches. Okay, and because the total slab width is around 486 inch, so each of each of the tub is going to take ha half of the uh, slab. That's why the effective slab width is 243 inches. And uh, based on these properties, I'm mean, entering all the things here. So you can refer to the tutorial afterwards and and check yourself. So I'm going uh, to enter all these values: the thickness of the slab, the haunch that I am providing, so I will give 4 inch, then height of the web, B1, BF1 is the flange width, uh, you can actually find all the information, all the information that I am providing in here, you can do all that information, you can find all that information in here, so I can provide if 1 is 1, 8, eighty one this is b f two is the bottom plant one and bottom plants thickness that is there okay so we have provided the uh, information in here then what we can do is that uh, for the because it's a composite section so we need to convert the slab and uh, we need to convert the slab section property into steel section property to do that we need the modular ratio so either we are uh, define it manually or everything inside or what we can do is that we can go to select material from database and we can choose for the ASTM 
for the concrete we can choose the code and for steel we can choose uh, the property that I'm using the moment I do that the moment I do that this automatically fills up with the uh, modular ratio information and density ratio information okay so I can click on OK um, and if I wish to change it I can change it myself too so I, if I want it to be 7.56 I can do it 7.56 myself too if you're doing a manual modeling usually manual modeling what you do is that for a composite section uh, you have to lay uh, the section first and then probably at some stage you are having the you are having the wet concrete load over the over the section you have the we are having the wet concrete load over the section for the slab and uh, uh, the, that wet concrete load is still uh, taking it, it is still taken by the uh, only by the before composite action that is it's the slab uh, doesn't have the structural stiffness stiffness yet to transfer the forces right so when the slab comes into picture uh, what happens is that the slab will act as a structural member over the girder and then all the other loads after the composite uh, property has been activated will be taken by the composite stiffness right so that's why to simulate those things what we usually do is that we remove the wet concrete load at such a at a certain stage because otherwise the slab load will be considered multiple times so in order to avoid that thing if you want if you wish to avoid the wet concrete load I just want to have the wet concrete load and I just want to switch the stiffness properties when I wish to do it if you want to avoid those things then you can put ds by dc as zero okay so if you put ds by dc as zero it takes uh, the density of slab as zero so it doesn't take the weight of the slab when it is activating the um, structural mem slab as a structural member okay so that is the advantage of having ds by dc so currently we are just doing it ds by dc because the wizard will automatically do all the things and it will uh, deactivate the wet concrete load at a certain stage okay so we'll change the offset now as we do usually in our uh, all the bridges so we'll change the offset changing the offset means that I'm changing the load position from the centroid of the girder to the uh, to the top of the girder okay so I will change the offset from center center to center top center top means that if we click on display offset uh, you will see a blue icon and a red icon red icon means that it has shifted the loading position from the centroid to the top okay so all the loading will be done on the top of the girder right now but all the forces are still going to be calculated about the centroid so it doesn't make a difference if um, you are, it, it doesn't change the centroid of the section basically okay so if you just click on okay okay and then you choose then you choose multiple models of velocity why because i'm not giving any age or any time dependent properties i'm just directly giving 3n uh, 3n to n n is the modular ratio n or m whatever you say so n is the modular ratio that I'm giving here so I'm giving for long term the ES by EC ratio um, it increases so instead of giving time dependent properties so there are two methods to go with it so one is like if I can directly give uh, the time dependent I can give the long term uh, effect of modular ratio over here or what I can do is that I can give a proper time dependent material property so there are two ways of doing it so this is like the easier way so you can multiply it by 3 and put the, the value here so once you have done that uh, once you have given the section 1 property I can click on apply then for section 2 all the slab information is same uh, the, some few things like uh, BF1 will change and TF1 will change BF3 changes to 9 TW changes to <coughs> TW is remaining same B2 is 81 and this will be 1.5 and for the second section uh, if you go back to the presentation if I go back to the presentation for the second section uh, what we are having is that we are having a stiffener here so if you just look at look at closely we are having a longitudinal stiffener that we are having so how to model the longitudinal stiffener um, so what we'll do is that we'll go to uh, stiffener dot 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 that you're saying and from here 
I will just choose T. Okay, I'll name this T as uh, W T eight cross twenty five. Okay, and then all the height and all the information eight point one three seven point zero seven T W is point three eight and T F is point six three. Okay, and then we click on add. So once we have done that then we we have to choose which position do we do we want to have want to have that stiffener so it's an end bottom so i'm going to have one at the one at the center of this uh, of the bottom flange so what i will do is that i just fix it so i will just give it as 41.5 Okay. So if you wish to uh, actually count the stiffener in the count the longitudinal stiffener area into the area of into the stiffness calculation of the full stub girder, then in case you check on, if you check on, it will consider the uh, stiffness of T, this longitudinal stiffener also in the stub girder uh, section properties calculation. Okay. So we click on OK. So we have this uh, small uh, longitudinal stiffener that we are having here. Rest all rest of the things are same, so we'll click on apply for section two. Now between the turb girders, usually uh, you can either have bracings or you can have end uh, diaphragms. Um, so de depending upon your project, if you wish to have an end diaphragm or if you wish to have an uh, bracing. So for for current application, I'm just providing end diaphragms, so I can give like solid rectangle and name it as diaphragm. So we don't have a database for solid rectangle, of course. So what we can do is that we can go to user, and we can type in 78 for height. It's approximately equal to the depth of the you know, tub girder, so it will cover full tub girder. That's that's what we uh, um, meant to do. Okay, and we'll just go to center top, and we'll click on okay. Okay, so once you are once you are done, once you are done with this, then you can click on apply for diaphragm. And one more section that we need is uh, W T nine. Okay, so we need this section too. Uh, so we can go to the database, and then we can go to T section from here. Okay, and then we can choose the that particular section. This is for the cross bracing, basically. So I will explain uh, why do we need this and how do we do it. So it's here. Okay. So this we can change the offset to center center. We want it in the center center offset. The loading line to be aligned with the center. Okay. So once we have once we are done with it. Uh, we can click on OK and we can close it. So all the section properties and all the material properties are given. So if you go to works tree, you have uh, all these properties already given and the creep factors that was there, section stiffness factor that was there has already been incorporated. But the thing is that it hasn't been defined anywhere. Uh, it hasn't been assigned to anything. That's why it is showing in blue. Okay, so um, the next step will be uh, to manipulate the wizard. So we'll go to structure and then we'll go to uh, steel composite bridge. This is the wizard for steel composite sections. So instead of uh, girder type composite tie, I'm going to choose as a composite steel tub. Okay. So you have the capability of doing all frame or you have the capability of doing deck, the deck element as plate element and the girder that is the tub as frame element. So you have both the capabilities. Uh, in my civil, so we'll, I, for for our purpose, I'm choosing uh, for all frame. I can give the span information. Remember, the unit is an inch. Okay, so if you wish to change the unit before, just go here and change your unit to feet, and you can change it. Okay, so I I will give all the information in inches. So I have three spans, so I'm giving uh, the span information using a comma in between. So it's like 1920, 192520, and then it's 1920 again. Same. Okay. 
and deck width if you remember 243 into 3 it is 486 uh, inches for the deck width okay so if you have like a multiple curve thing if you have multiple curve and with different uh, uh, skew angle at each position and with different banking with different elevations and everything then you go for multi curve so in that case uh, this is the information uh, that you need for multi curve okay so it's like this is for transition curve so if you have a curve like this something like this okay so you define the transition curve then you define the radius at the mid for another curve then you define another transition curve so all these information you have to enter in here uh, you have to enter the vertical curve information that this is for uh, uh, this is for like elevation so if you have bridge at different elevations like this then you can provide in that way and this is like bank rotation so if you have like um, the surface at a particular bank then you can provide it in here okay so it will be in this manner so all this information you can provide it here for our case we're having a simple curve bridge so even you can simulate the same thing with your multi curve uh, but simply if you have to use you can use radius okay so so we'll just enter the radius okay and then we'll enter the bearing type so either with substructure or bearing type for our case I'm using bearing type uh, I'm using the supports okay so fixed support I'm giving as pier one so for our case it will be like similar to this case as you can see here okay so I have like uh, two bearings here two bearings here and two bearings here two bearings here and two bearings here so I'm giving like pier one as fixed in between as fixed bearing and all the other bearings will be automatically decided by the software okay and um, I hope that you are already aware of the center of the ref of the reference line in center of the deck so here you have something called layout offset what this means is that currently well, the central line is the cent is the line uh, to the center of the deck okay and for the, for the if you want to change the reference position from the center of the deck to the any reference line you give an offset so basically if you give a reference line uh, at an offset then you define all the good positions from this reference line but currently if you have given zero then what will happen is that all these webinars uh, oh, sorry all these um, uh, all the good informations will be provided from the center of the deck okay so once you have done that don't forget to save the wizard so we can save the wizard as some file okay Similarly, we can go and add section information. So we have a deck thickness of 9.6. I can give the number of girders and everything. Since I have already saved uh, the wizard, okay. So what we can do is that we can I, I can just double click on the save thing, and I have all the inputs uh, of the wizard that are, that are, that I already inputted, right? So currently we are not having diaphragms at each end, so I'm just going divisions per span as one. So it's like only at the span end I'm going to have a diaphragm, okay? And uh, then it's section one is, uh, okay. So for deck we are giving the material information as of concrete. For the girder we are giving as steel. For the bracings, we, are, we have to, since our bracing is a diaphragm, so I'm giving as uh, concrete. And then we have the girder offset. So I have currently two girders, right? Uh, if you go to the, if you go back to the presentation, so I have currently two girders. So both of them are like, um, you have a total thickness of total deck width of 486 mm, and each each of them is sharing 243 mm. Okay, so the angle type I have given is perpendicular. So the diaphragms are aligned with the uh, with the curve. How however the curve is going, it is aligned normal to the curve, 
And since we have different sections for different spans, so I have given the section property in such a way. So for 0 to 1920, this was the first span. Uh, I'm having section 1. For 1920 to 4440 inches, I'm having section 2. And for the rest, I'm having section 1. So it's been aligned in such a way. So for girder 1, and uh, this is for girder 1. And for girder 2, if you want to copy the girder information, I can simply go and click on this and click on OK. So it will copy the same information on the girder 2 also. OK. And there is something called generate 10 point elements. What it does is that it automatically uh, gives you the results in uh, one tenth of a span. So you don't have to create nodes in between. It will automatically do it. Plus, also one thing we have is that we have a transverse deck element. Uh, basically, we are not actually having a slab, right? We are, uh, we are only providing, we, what we have provided till now is just a composite section property of a single line. Okay, so it's like a single line. Okay, so in order to simulate the slab, what we do is that we provide cross beams in between uh, having the same stiffness as that of slab. So it will have the transverse stiffness of the slab. So the spacing of the cross beams you are deciding from here. This is the spacing of the cross beams. So basically, based on the spacing and based on the things, it will automatically um, calculate the cross beam section property and add it. Okay. So you'll see it once we do it. Then if we go to load information, then we can give uh, the B1 uh, as dimensions, the other dimensions. I'm not having a median here, so I'm just giving zero. Then the form work, uh, if you have wet concrete load, so all these informations, the wearing surface load, the barrier weight, so everything has been calculated as per the um, values that I have given you before. In order to give moving loads, I have to first decide the moving load. So I will just click on uh, define moving load. I will click on Astol RFD, click on OK. Then I go to traffic lanes. If you remember, I have three traffic lanes, right? So currently, uh, it's like, from the end, it's like uh, we have given as 12 feet, right? 12 feet lanes. We have 12 feet lanes. So, but what uh, the lane width that I have taken is around 8 feet. The reason for this uh, 8 feet is because uh, in MIDAS, you have something called traffic lane optimization. In traffic lane optimization, what it will do is that it will place the vehicle at the left end of the uh, lane, at the mid of the lane, and at the right end of the lane. Okay. Since in the code it is mentioned that you cannot have a vehicle within two uh, within two feet of the of the lane ends, so that's why what I have done is that I have removed two feet on both ends and I have given eight feet. So I have given the information in such a way that uh, the lane, the vehicles can be placed at the edge of the lanes. Okay, so we are having three lanes, so I have given three lane informations for defining vehicles. I can go to define vehicles and then click on add standard and I can give a 33% of dynamic allowance and for a tandem I will again choose 33% so this completes the live load and the dead load information that we need next we come to construction stage so if you remember um, for the construction stage, uh, for the construction stage analysis, um, I, I showed you a layout, right? So if we go to the layout again, so we have a layout in such a way. So we have to define these negative moment zones, right? So in order for the software to decide a proper construction stage, we have to define all these things. Uh, so to do that, what we can do is that we can go to uh, advanced in here. So I have provided for the pier 1 to the left how much of the length I should consider to the right how much of the length I should consider and for the pier 2 how, how it should be. So you can provide the information in here. Similarly for deck split construction so I am considering for the first days that D1, D3 and D5 be constructed and for the second stage I'm providing the information that D2 and D4 should be constructed. So you are providing exactly how you are going to have the uh, forces. Okay. So once you have done that, then you go to long-term boundary and then you check on both the things like creep 1 and creep 2 because we are considering the long run boundaries. Reinforcements, you, either you can define it now. So if you go to reinforcement, define reinforcement, 
it will open the section property calculator for the section so you have basically a lot of ways of providing the enforcement but the one that I uh, like a lot is that you can go to line you can go to input method B you can just choose the first point and the last point and you can give a number uh, like I'm providing 20 reinforcement of this much dial so I can just provide like this and click on add it's so a moment to click on add it will add on reinforcement okay so in the same way you can add for the other section too so once you are done with this you just click on ok and you have the full model ready in front of you okay so this is like for the end diaphragms so many people uh, they tend to give a diaphragm uh, covering the full top section you can do that way also you can consider this way also it's it's up to you how you uh, want to do the analysis uh, for the bridge okay so some people prefer just giving an end diaphragm like this so you can provide an end diaphragm like this and currently if you see that I am having steel uh, two steel top girders but there is no bracing information inside the top girder so unfortunately currently we are not providing that uh, bit of flexibility that uh, you can provide the bracings in here but there are there are a lot of a lot of ways that you can use to provide bracings okay so if you have like uh, an autocad file or already for the bracing information so what you can do is that uh, you can just go to Myra Civil, you can import, you can auto you can import doing an AutoCAD DXF, then go to browse and like I have these informations already. So I can choose the bracing information. I can choose a section that, that is not there already. So it's like um, uh, I have like eight sections, so I will give nine here. Okay, and uh, once you have done uh, with that like section uh, you can give the scale factor and once you have done with that you can just click on OK so it will provide it will just import all the basic information so this is one way of doing things another way is that if you have if you you can uh, you work as a team right so um, what you can do is that you, if you were, if you are working as a team, so one person can create the bracing information, one person can create this full model and work on it. So if you have a model already that has the bracing information, so what you can do is that you can go to my civil, you can go to merge data file, and then you can go to the model and that you have the bracings for, and you can make a group out of it. Okay, and then you can choose intersect frame element so that whenever wherever the nodes are there intersecting the line element it will intersect the frame elements and then click on OK so this is one more way of merging two files okay so either you provide a bracing in that way or you provide a bracing in this way one more complicated thing is uh, to have like if you ha even if you have like bracing information and all the other things you need to provide links in between okay so currently I have the bracing information Okay, currently I have the bracing information, but I don't have the links in between, right? So to provide links is like uh, is, is a little manual task. So usually what you have, you can do is that you can go to boundary, you can go to rigid link. Okay, so once you have done that, you can choose the master node, and you can choose all the nodes of the bracings that are there. So before that, what I can do is that I can select all only bracing group that I did and activate only this group so this will just ease my uh, view a little and then I can select all the nodes okay so I can go about doing it one by one so this is like a little manual task that you have to do so if you display it it will look like something like this okay but the thing is that um, uh, there are a lot of ways I mean this is not the only way of doing it the other way that I was telling you is that if you if you what you can do is that you can just select these elements like the end elements I'm just selecting all these end elements right 
So if you are very convergent with Midas, you will feel that there are a lot of ways of modifying things. So what I need is that I need a very uh, good pattern of node numbering. So what I can do, I can go to node element, I can go to renumber nodes. Okay, so in here, uh, for the selected nodes, I want to renumber from say 3000. Why 3000? Why not 1? Because 1 to 2777 nodes are already there inside the model. That's why I'm saying 3000. Okay, so once I have given 3000, I can give us plus x, plus y, and plus z as the information, and then I can click on apply. So once I do that, once I do that, if you if I go and show you the bracing information here, uh, um, and I show the node number here, so you'll find that everything is ordered in a particular way. Okay, so then you can simply use the node numbers in Excel to add the basic information. So I can have like, I can go to Resid Link from the works tree, go to tables, and I can add like 383 is 3183 and I can all I can add this bracing information in a particular pattern so you can follow that pattern in Excel you can copy that thing in Excel and then paste it back in here so this is like these are like few tweaks you can do I will be mentioning all these things inside the tutorial so it will be very easy for you to follow uh, follow uh, all these things that I am providing so this is for the bracing I have a model which is having all the bracing information I'm going to show you in a while. So before uh, doing all these things, one more thing that we have to do is that currently all the bracing information, I will uncheck the notes, uh, I have to provide them the section property of WT9 48.5, you remember right? So I have not used that property anywhere, so uh, what I can do, I can just simply drag and drop over it, okay, so this is something that you can do. Similarly, I can drag and drop the material property. I can remove the excess material property that is there. I don't need it. Okay, so once I've done uh, both these things and uh, provided everything, still our structure won't work. Why is it so? Because we have provided some construction staging information. And I need to add those elements that I have given right now inside the structure group, right? So what we have to do, we have to select all the bracings, group, and if you go to the first stage, like if you if you go to the first stage from here, go to stage one, you will see the substructure grace, girder and bracing groups are activated. So what I can do, I can just right click on bracing and click on assign plus. Similarly, uh, if you go to the groups again, if you go to the first stage, if you go to the boundary group, you have substructure deformed group that has been activated. So I have activated the bracings, but I have not uh, done anything for the rigid links, right? So I need to activate the rigid link between the bracing and the top of the deck. Uh, to do that, uh, I can just uh, ag again double click on only bracings group, and I can drag and drop, or I can just right click substructure group, click on assign plus, and click on OK. So what it will do, it will automatically, uh, when I'm doing this assign plus, I'm choosing all the boundary conditions with it. So since there is rigid body link that has already been already inside this selection box, so all the rigid links will be selected inside the group. Now your model is complete. Now it will run without any error. Okay. Before we proceed, uh, what else that we need to do is that currently we are having only lanes for the moving load analysis. <laughs> currently we are pro we are having only lanes like three traffic lanes, so if you just right click on traffic lanes and click on display, so we'll have like three traffic lanes over the bridge, okay? So if you remember I was telling you that you have to uh, be, um, so what you have to do is that you have to, um, you have to consider traffic lane optimization, right? So in order to do that, what you can do is that you can go to properties of each lane and you can check on traffic lane optimization okay and you can get the lane width total lane width that is there for the traffic uh, for the traffic lane optimization okay similarly you can go to uh, lane 2 and do the same thing 
you can check on traffic lane optimization and similarly you can do the same thing for the lane 3. So I can just undisplay the things and I have got the vehicles, I have got the traffic lanes but the thing is that again you are seeing that these are in blue so that means that these have been defined but it hasn't been assigned in the model yet. To assign it I need to add moving load cases so what I will do is that I will go to load, moving load and then I will go to moving load cases. So once I have done that I will go click on add okay so I will add like one moving load MVL and this this will automatically take care for the multiple presence factor that is there in the, over the bridge okay and then uh, you can choose either combined or independent okay so I want HL93 and HL tandem to work independently with each other so what I can do I can click on add so I can choose all three lanes on selected lanes I can give the minimum number of load lanes as one maximum as three so what it means is that currently HL98 tandem uh, vehicle with a scale factor of 1 will be running over each lane so it will be running like these are if these are the lanes so it will be running over each lane one by one then a set of two will be running in each uh, in each lane so there will be multiple combinations that you that you were thinking right so there will be a lot of combinations that it will provide automatically uh, based on the information that you are giving here so once you click on OK, you can give like for truck similar thing one, three. Okay. So if you click on independent, these combinations will be running uh, independently, and the case will be showing you the maximum result uh, irrespective of the uh, combination that you are giving. Okay. So if you wish to see the results separately for each combinations, then what you can do is that you can give a separate load case for them. So instead of providing both the information here, you can provide a separate load case. If you choose combined, then it will do internal combinations among the combinations that, is, that, has, that has already been done. So that's like a very complicated thing. So if you wish to do such cases, then you can do in that way. So that, uh, that makes the moving load complete. So once you have done with that, then you can go to, um, uh, once you are done with the moving load cases, then you can go to analysis you can go to uh, moving load analysis then I can provide the influence line dependent point or all points so if you click on all points this influence generating points uh, won't make any sense so you can just click on influence line dependent points and number per line element this is the increment that I'm giving so I can either give two I can either give three so for each line element it will place the vehicle over here over here and over here like this so it will divide into the three parts uh, sorry it will divide into three parts and it will provide the loading uh, over here over here and at the ends okay similarly uh, you can choose normal plus concurrent forces uh, for the uh, to calculate the concurrent forces also for the moving load and then you can choose all the reactions displacement force moments okay now the thing is that a lot of people, a lot of questions that I get, I get is the moving load is really slow. But the thing is that you have to understand that uh, this is kind of a huge bridge, right? And you are doing a traffic lane optimization and it is doing so many combinations. It's not like it is just doing the combinations that you are providing. It is doing internal combinations. It is providing and it is doing it for three positions for each lane. So depending on the number of lanes, depending on the length of the bridge, it will take time. If you wish to perform it much faster, then you can create a structure group. Like I want the solution to be, I, I want the solution only to this portion of the girder. I don't want solution to other portion of the girder because that I'm designing only that much portion of girder. If I want a solution only for that much portion of girder, I can specify a group in here for moving load. And then I can just click on group and I can choose the group that I want to get the analysis for. Okay, in that way you can filter out the results very quickly and you can get your moving load results very quickly. Okay, so this is what we can do with the moving load. I have already performed the analysis for this kind of a bridge. So I will directly open up the analysis result. So this is the model which, uh, which is already having the analysis done. 
so you can see here uh, that the I told you remember that P of one is fixed. So P of one is fixed. So uh, according to that, all the other elements are having uh, really all the other boundaries are having releases as per what we have given. And automatically, what the wizard as it does, it gives the nodal local access. So you don't have to worry about local access of the nodes. So it automatically provides those nodal local access. So once we have done that, if you wish to check the results for only girder so what I can do is that I can go to group I can just double click on girder I can activate that so I will just deactivate all the bracings from here okay so once we have only the girders I can go to force I can go to beam diagrams so I can choose for MV max moment so this is the maximum possible moment that is there in any of the uh, locations that are the that any any vehicle location okay and for if we go to MV min this is the, more, the most negative moment that you can get uh, throughout the bridge uh, in all the locations okay so you can check on legend and click on apply to find out which is having the minimum most negative moment so this is like 762 so I can type in 762 here press enter and activate that so it will just activate um, the element there okay so once you have done that then you can go to uh, either solid fill and check the results like that or if you wish to see the results in between this element you can just go to quick view and go to element click on this and then you can choose any position and you can see the value for that position inside the element okay so once we are done done that uh, so you can go to if you wish to um, provide if you wish to see the construction stages you can just go to construction stage information so in the first stage if you if I go to initial view, in the first day only the bracings and you know, diaphragms are available. In the second stage, in the third stage, the deck is there and the wet concrete is uh, deactivated. Third stage, uh, in the fourth stage, I have the full deck there. So this is like the construction staging that the uh, software has performed internally. For other results, like if you wish to see the uh, If you wish to see uh, other results like uh, deformation and reactions, you can go to reaction and go to reaction force and moments. Okay, and click on FZ and click on apply to the reaction forces. Okay, I hope that you are already aware of these things, so I'm not, I'm not going to spend much time in uh, showing you the results. So for design, usually what you do is that you go to results, then you go to uh, load combinations and then you go to composite steel girder design so if you click on composite steel girder design you can just remove this probably and then click on auto generation okay and if you wish to change other parameters so you can change the other parameters in here so I can give like uh, you, if you go here you can find out the index different indexes uh, for different uh, bridge components and how the uh, factors are going to be taken so you can choose B C D like that okay and once you have done that you can just click click on OK just a minute. Just a minute, there's something, I think there's something wrong in it. If you go to, sorry, I'm in the construction stage, that's why it is not working. So you have to go to post CS. 
slow combination then you go to auto generation uh, same thing and then you click on OK and once it does you will see all the load combinations that are there for that particular information that you have given okay so once you have done uh, given the load combinations then you go for design so once you have generated the load combinations also if you wish to design the bracing then you go to steel design and again you do the same thing so I already have the information for steel design so you click on or you just click on auto generation and you click on OK and you get the information for or you get, you'll get the combinations for steel design okay then I go to design so before designing uh, like the composite design you can provide span information for the uh, for the girders that you are providing uh, so you can just activate the girders I will deactivate the estimate you can activate the girders and you can choose pants in between so like if I display so I can choose like this span complete this span and I can go to uh, structure go to the pre pressing mode to do that okay so I can choose a particular span so I can choose this particular span and go to structure composite bridge span information so I can provide span information in such a way so like if you click on add or replace you will get all the information then you can provide where is the support so at the i end I'm having the support here okay and at the j end we're having the support at this end so this is the span information so you can enter the span information the use of the span information is that uh, when it gets the design results, it will give you the design results for each and every span, uh, each and every element inside the span information. So once you have done that, then you can go to uh, PSC, or you can go to design, and you can choose the code, and you can choose the design parameters. Since it's a multiple box section girder or multiple tub girder, so you can provide multiple box and tub. So automatically, it will consider the same winner and torsion and distortion stresses. Okay, and uh, you check on all the strength limit states and the design parameters that are there. Okay, so we can click on OK. So then you can go to uh, design material. Okay, so you, we can have the design material that we are having. So we can have the, if you want, wish to have different flange, uh, uh, different top flange and bottom flange thickness and other things you want to consider different grades for them so you can provide a hybrid factor okay or else you can give the grade from here you can provide the concrete grades and specify the um, grade of rebar that are there okay so once you have done that once you have done with that then you can go to load combination type automatically the software will provide it inside the strength limit state different strength limit states that are there then, then you can go for uh, longitudinal reinforcement see there are a lot of ways of a lot of places where you will find it so we have already entered the reinforcements so we don't need to enter it again and similarly we can go for transverse stiffness so if you wish to give a transverse stiffener you can provide a transverse stiffener in here inside the tub section if you wish to give an unbraced length so you can provide for the entire bridge or a few sections the, the unbraced length and you can provide a laterally unbraced length as some some value so currently it's like 200 inch so I can provide like that Okay, so I will just uncheck the bracings. Somehow I have just uh, given the bracing information with it. So I will just uncheck the bracings that are there. Yeah, 
this looks clear. Once we have done that, then you can uh, go to uh, design position. So you can provide a design positions. So currently, what the design position that I'm providing is the maximum and minimum moments where I was getting. So if you remember, if I go to results, right? If I go to forces, beam diagrams for the for the maximum moment that I was getting, for for the I'm just choosing it for the moving load. So you can do it for the load combination that you would actually want, actually you think is a governing. So this is like 417, I'm getting the maximum. And for moving load minimum, it's 762. So I will, I'm choosing all both these design positions as the design position. So I can choose like uh, INJ and put in 716, uh, 762 and 417 like that and then click on apply. So once you have done that, you can provide an output position. Uh, output position is something you should provide only for a few elements because otherwise the uh, software takes quite a bit of time in, providing, in generating the output for all the elements. So you, have to, you should provide only a few elements for output positions. So then you have share connector, so you can provide the share connector information uh, inside uh, this menu. Once you have done that, then you go to fatigue parameters, so you can provide different fatigue parameters too. So you can provide the codes and provide a, it will automatically calculate the different things that are there. So you can choose all the elements and you can provide the fatigue parameters too. Okay. So once you have done that, then you go to deck overhang loads. So if you wish to provide a deck overhang load, you can provide in here. So once you have done that, you just click on design. And says that a steel girder has designed. So it is actually quick because I have selected only a few points. So I can go out for either span checking or total checking. If you go to span checking, it will show you all the things. So currently, some uh, somewhere it's failing some elements in this inside the span. So it is showing those things where it is failing. So you will find NG and NG where it is not good section. Wherever it is okay, it will you will find okay. Similarly, if you go to composite design and you go for total checking. Okay, so you'll find information regarding total checking. Okay, and other other things like if you wish to see in detail, like for only for strength limit state, so you'll find that the strength limit state is fine for for the sections that I've designed. These are making basically the sections that I've designed. I'm checking the design for. Similarly, if you go to share, it is failing. So it, if it is failing, that means that we need a bit of share connectors and other say reinforcements, right? And then we have like service limit state. So you can go and check about all these sections, now all these uh, options one by one. You can also go to de design result diagram and go to node. So for span one, uh, uh, the span one information that I amount of moment that is coming at that node and the green is the design moment. Since it is doing only for two, only for a section at INJ, INJN, so it is showing like that. Similarly for span 2 you will get, okay, so for flexor it is easily passing, you can see it directly from here. So once you have performed all these checks, then you can go for Excel report. Okay, so if you click on Excel report, then it will generate an Excel report, a detailed Excel report of, of the things. So I have already uh, given the Excel report. So this is what it looks like. Um, so for a 762 element, these are the reinforcement information with the uh, tub information that is there. It, it will show the girder section property the transverse property, the elastic section, the short term, long term things. And then we have design, a strength, transverse uh, stiffener properties, flexure properties. 
okay so it checks each and everything inside the code and provides you the information here it is checking for saint venant so this is like saint venant safe force that it is checking okay so for each and every things that it checks since we uh, provided share connectors for a few elements uh, it is showing that few things are not good so we have to provide uh, the information according to that so you can check this and you can you know remodel your share connectors and other things that are there so this is something that actually needs time and I mean design it will take a few iterations from your side but you ultimately will find a complete report that is generated from the software so if you print it so it will generate it in a it will show in a very printable format okay so this is for the design of uh, steel tub uh, sections so once you have done with the steel tub sections if you wish to do it uh, for the bracings if you wish to do for the bracings so I, what I will do is that I will just activate the bracings so currently if I wish to do only for these bracings so instead of going to composite design what you can do is that you can go to steel design you can choose the design code you can check on uh, all book um, if you wish to do it and then you can provide the strength reduction factors modify steel material and once you have done that you can either go to steel design result or steel code check so if you go on steel code check it will check the steel um, the bracing that is there so if you go to graphic uh, you have to select a member so I'm selecting this so it will give you a graphic information of the param checks it has done this like summary of the bracings and for for the lens and other things or it, if you click on detail it will give you a complete detailed report of the forces it has considered and all the things it's kind of like a design report for the bracings so this is in brief about uh, what the things are there so as I told you that I am currently doing the FSW example so uh, in the tutorial I will try and replicate the things that have already been done in the code so you can easily check the things and other uh, check uh, the things yourself so uh, I'll be taking a Q&A session right now so this is how very simply you can actually do the compose section uh, yeah for, for a few more questions usually that we get uh, like how do you check for corrosions and things right so if you wish to do corrosions like if I say that a particular portion of my section like these portions are corroded if you want to check the corro if you want to uh, manipulate the corrosion uh, for a particular section property so what you can do is that you can go to properties uh, you can go to uh, section properties sorry section manager and go to st stiffness okay so in the inside the each or each and every section you will pro you will get the sections that are there so it's for steel if it's for the steel stub section what you can do is that you can go to a particular element and then you can give your reinforcement reinforcement scale factors in here according to what you want for the corroded section okay so this is something you have to go to default of course and this is something um, that you include in the corrosion like you, you have to decrease the stiffness of the section where, where there is a corroded section right if you wish to uh, if you wish to model the corrosion then you have to go for plate elements and do the model Okay. These are the queries. Okay, but if they are
okay um, so this is how you will do corrosion inside and um, it's the top literal bracing will we will do it in the same manner there's no uh, other difference inside uh, Mira Civil. One thing you should understand about the software is that anything that is horizontal the software will directly consider it as a beam. Anything that is a uh, vertical it is it considers it as column and anything that is a slant it, co it considers as bracing. Okay so by default if you design it you can design it automatically uh, by the software will automatically take the things into consideration and it will do automatically right but if you wish to design a column suppose in in term in term uh, as a beam then you have to modify the material type you have to modify the section type as column that's the only uh, section type is beam that's the only uh, thing that you have to do Yeah, for span information, yeah, it is needed for, uh, it is mostly mostly needed for design. Uh, it gives a very good representation of the entire elements in summary. It gives, gives a good summary of all the things, so you don't have to go to element by element and check the results. It gives a complete, for each span uh, information, the, for the elements that you have given, it gives a complete uh, summary of results in there. Okay, so that's the use of span information. Otherwise, even if you don't give span information, it will do, do the design. It's not necessary to give span information. Yeah, uh, that, that's a very valid question. Um, that if you have like composed uh, consistent state and static load cases, then it will add it to a twice, right? So usually, what you do is that all the static load cases that you are giving, like if you are providing the wind load as a static load case, so what you do is that and self fit as a suppose uh, uh, construction stage in the construction stages. So for the load cases, if I go to load cases, if, if you see here, uh, the wizard has automatically provided everything in the construction stage type. Right? So whenever a load case type is defined as construction stage load, what it means is that it will only take uh, the information of that load case in the construction stage it won't consider that in a static load as a static load case so you don't have to worry about that but had the self weight be given a load case like dead load right if you have given like i mean it will delete the analysis but if had you given it like dead load and then included the self weight in the construction stage it would have considered it twice so you have to be very uh, aware of the things uh, aware of the load case that you are giving so whatever load case that you are giving in the construction stage, uh, give the type as construction stage load case. Okay, so that's the thing. Okay, guys, uh, uh, if there is any more questions, I would love to answer it uh, over the over our email ID. So if I will, I will share you the. So for technical support, you can just send us at ts at midasit.com. I hope that the session was useful for all you guys to get started with the uh, Tubga Debris. You will be getting the tutorial in a while. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm still working over it. So I, I will just go over each and every, go over each, each of the things in detail and I'm sure that it will be really helpful to all you guys. And uh, thanks for your presence and hope you have a nice day.